Hello everyone, I'm Viking Boy Billy, and this is Heretic, Shadow of the Serpent Riders. I'm going to do a cooperative let's play of this with my buddy, Paramoltart. Say hello, Paramoltart. Hello everybody. Heretic was released in 1993. And it was made by Raven Software and published by ID Software. It is a first-person shooter and it's a total conversion of Doom. I think it's the very first total conversion of it to be released. It was also one of the first uh, first-person shooters to feature inventory manipulation and the ability to look up and down. Yeah, as you'll be seeing, a lot of new additions was added to the engine to spice things up in this game. Can you tell us what the story to this is, Paramoltart? Yes. <laughs> Three brothers, known as the Serpent Riders, have used their immense magical powers to turn the seven kings of Pathoris into mindless puppets. The kings, in turn, led their subjects in doing the Serpent Riders' bidding. However, the Sith elves are immune to the Serpent Riders' spells and had no allegiance to any of the Seven Kings. The Serpent Riders thus declared the Sveth as heretics and launched a campaign of genocide against them! <laughs> the Sveth were in possession of seven candles, each tied to a natural power of the world, as well as the one king. In desperation, the Sidvech elders extinguished these candles, destroying both the king's armies and weakening the elves' own powers in the process. Taking advantage of the elves' weakened state, the disciples of the serpent riders struck against the elves and killed the elders. Afterwards, the Sidvech went into hiding. One, however, revealed in the sequel to be named Corvus, sets out in search of Dispahil, the weakest of the three serpent riders, and the only one remaining in Pathoris. The player must fight through the undead hordes, infesting the city of the damned, the ruined capital of the Srach. It's real name revealing to be Silver Spring and Heretic 2, and the site where the elders performed their rituals, and its end is the gateway to Hell's Maw, guarded by the Iron Lightches. After defeating them, the player must seal the portal and so prevent further infestation. However, the portal can only be sealed from the other side. From there, the character's only choice is to fight onward into the enemy's own territory. Eventually, he arrives at the Sephiroth's fortress. Whereupon, after fighting through the Serpent Rider's guards, a final battle with Disvaril himself commences. This barrel is initially mounted on a large serpent beast, later called a Chaos Serpent in Hexen. Once the beast is killed, this barrel fights on foot, summoning disciples to his aid. Once this barrel is finally destroyed, all of the creatures under his command perish as well. A portal opens, which the player steps through to complete the game! Referred to as the World Ripple in Heretic 2. The fortress crumbles into oblivion as the player is transported further away from its home. Yet the player's character does not feel victorious, sending greater dangers to come. The game ends with the image of Horseradish that... <coughs> Here's the arch. Next scene in Hexen, gazing at the player's character through a crystal ball. 
Well, that was a very detailed synopsis. Thank you, Wikipedia! But it's pronounced seed, as in the seed elves. They're not called the Sidduch. The Sidduch. That Wikipedia entry Paramal Tart just read off contains quite a few spoilers, but that was a very well done delivery, Paramal Tart. Thank you. Well, we almost burned through six minutes of the video with that, so why don't we go ahead and get this Let's Play started. Welcome to Let's Play Heretic, Shadow of the Serpent Riders, with Viking Boy Billy and Paramoltart. Say hi, Paramoltart. Hi, everybody! Right. So this is the first map of the game, obviously, and it's called the Docks. I'm going to unpause it now, and immediately we're attacked by these red flying things called gargoyles out here on the docks. Right. And... Like Paramount Tart was saying in the intro, this game has... The, one of the big things this game brought was the inventory system. And... There's a little box in the co down there where you can carry an item. And that there is a th is an energy orb. And this spinning thing is the yellow key. Yeah. That's the weirdest looking key you ever saw, isn't it? I know, right? These are also the weirdest looking docks I've ever seen as well. Yeah, and... Hey, Paramount Tart, look at the water. Are you looking at it? Yes. Now I pause the game. D are you still looking at the water? Yes, the it water. stopped moving. No, it didn't. I said the opposite of what was going on. Oh. Isn't that crazy? Like that statue with the fire on it, and it stops, but the water still... That's weird. Are there any other textures that keep moving when you pause the game? I don't know. Definitely. That's the new mission of this Let's Play video. Yeah, hey, so there is... if, if you come over here, there's a secret area behind this blue vial. Right. When opening it, we're confronted immediately by a gargoyle, which, as you can see, I turned into a red, pointy ball of mush. Wait, that's, the, that's not right. A, a, a red... A red, uh, mushy pile of, of diarrhea. <laughs> I right. said diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. well, here's the door that that key opens. And um, right now I have a weapon called the Elven Wand, which is just a little pea shooter, basically. And that thing we just killed is called a golem. Oh, I don't think he looks anything like Smeagol. Smeagol? What? What? Well, if we go here with this pile of skulls, another secret opens up. And it has another weapon. Ugh. This Star weapon over oil. here, Ninja. this is called the Gauntlet. Right, the Gauntlet, it like, 
it's this pair of gloves and when you use it it like fires electricity out of its fingers and it just like zaps them to death. Yeah, I said these things are called golems, but they can also be called... They're sometimes referred to as mummies sometimes. And... I just picked up an item. And like I was saying before, this one of the big things this game brought was an inventory system. Right now I picked up something called the Wings of Wrath. And it went into my little inventory bar there. And Paramoltar, are you jumping? jumping? Am I not supposed to be jumping and crouching? No, that is illegal. Don't do that. Sorry. And you look really, really ugly when you're crouching. It just like smushes down the sprite. <laughs> it, looks, <laughs> it looks really bad. <laughs> Yeah, like I was saying, I just picked up an item called the Wings of Wrath, and I'm going to use it right now. Look at me, Paramoltar. I'm flying. I could fly too if I felt like it. You mean by cheating with no clip, right? Except SV cheats are turned off, so you still can't do that. What if I typed SV cheats 1? And then I it think would... only the host is allowed to do that, and that's me. But this here is a weapon called the Hell Staff, and um, this and the Phoenix Rod we picked up earlier are the most powerful weapons in the game. And um, yeah, we find the most powerful weapons in the game. This right weapon here. right here is called the Hell Staff. Yeah, we find them like right here at the beginning of the game. Can you? Can you tell us why that is, Paramoltar? Because the game, it it and that it like the the maps, the multiplayer maps are the same as like deathmatch maps, I guess. And so when you play co-op, it's like deathmatch. And so like all the deathmatch weapons are there when they shouldn't be. Because if you played single player, they wouldn't be there. But since we're playing co-op and the game doesn't know the difference between deathmatch and co-op, like that means that like, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's basically like something like the designers may or may not have intended, but they were just too lazy to work it out, or maybe they were okay with it anyway, because it still works. And this thing's called a Mystic Urn, and it basically fully refills your health whenever you want to use it. Which isn't a nice thing to have. Where'd you go, Paramoltar? I went into this secret passageway. Well... Hey! Alright. And here's the crossbow. Which is a good weapon. Basically shoots three green arrow things. Hey Viking Boy Billy! Yeah? Check it out. You're standing on the fire. <laughs> Can you please not waste our time like that? Sorry. Yeah. And there's still this thing. Don't telefrag me. Alright. Here's a weapon called the Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw! It looks really cool. It like shoots these really fast bursts of bursts of 
stuff. And uh, Paramaltar, you're using the Dragon Claw, but it's doing something different from mine, isn't it? That's because <laughs> I picked up the item called the Tome of Power. Can you show us what that your shot again? Yeah, it's shooting out like these three, these little spike balls. And that's him using the wands right now. And the hell staff turns into that with that rain. Did you ever notice how fat the player's hand is when he has the dragon claw? Yeah, I've noticed that before. It's like very dispropor disproportional. I don't. Maybe he's holding it really close to his face. Or maybe one of the artists was really fat and he based it on his own hand. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And um, that was weird. Like the secret flag didn't activate until I got right up in there. But, um, yeah, if you ever run out of ammo on those weapons and you don't have the gauntlet, there's also this little bow staff here, and it really sucks. But it can get the job done sometimes if you don't want to waste ammo on a golem. And, um... I noticed there's a lot of attention to detail, like in the map making, like the the sectors that contain fire um, flicker. I don't know. I thought that was kind of worth pointing out. Yeah, it's pretty cool that they do nice things like that. And that's called an undead warrior, which is like a skeleton in a thing. And here's the level exit. Are we ready to get out of here? Alright, I'm gonna exit now. And here's our intermission screen. Shows us our scores. My name is Player, and his name is Rupert the Great. We might have to change those. But I am Rupert the Great. That's my warrior name. Alright. And we got everything. <sighs> here's the, the map, and it shows us the next area we're going to go to. And this is a map of the City of the Damned, and um, me and Paramoltart have had some very philosophical discussions about this map. Like, just the fact that it's an actual, like, a drawn-out map on a table, basically. So we're like miniatures, like miniature people. Elves. Yeah, it could be like that. Or this could be... Or there could be some other elf at, at home with his map that's like somehow marking off where we're going next. Also, whoever mapped this out is really, really stupid because it does, the, the map that you see here does not reflect the actual level design at all, so... I think the docs does like a little bit but well no not really because that 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 wooden docks over there like it has like that shape of that shape on top isn't what it no really the uh like. the docks um the docks in the actual game kind of go out like kind of like the dragon claw you know it has like the three the three different things and they all like go outwards this is like all weird and Square. Yeah, and it made those that those wooden dock part docks parts so huge, like the size of like one of those entire buildings, basically. And they're not really they sh they shouldn't be that big. 
at least not in the map. And um, yeah, one yeah one time Paramol Tart was talking about like, what if there's a um, a guy on the map and he's eating like there's a guy by the table and he's eating pancakes and like what if he spills maple syrup all over the map every like, time because you eat pancakes and you're like not this time i'm not gonna get maple syrup on me not this time no but then it does somehow and it's just it just it just happens yeah, and there's but, no stopping it but what if that like that theory of us being miniature of everything here actually being on that map on the table and that giant elf spills his maple syrup on the map there's going to be a flood of maple syrup all over the place that we'll all drown in that would be so cool hey we should do a level pack for heretic and it'll be like a big tabletop and there'll be pancakes and then, like, pats of butter. That would be so cool. I'd play that level pack. Would you play that level pack? Totally. So, yeah, that was map one, the docks. And I think we can call it a, a wrap for this part right now. Wait, what if we just, like, stopped right here in the Let's Play video and then just started playing another game? And then, like, because then the audience, they'd be watching, like, thinking it was Heretic, and then all of a sudden we're playing Battletoads out of nowhere, and then, like, it still says Heretic playthrough. You know what I mean? Like, I think we should do that. Except you told them all of this already, so it's not going to fool anybody now. Well, that's the end of part two of Let's Play Heretic Co-op with Viking Boy Billy, Billy and Paramount. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Viking Boy Billy. <laughs> so tune in next time when we're going to play map, t map E1M2 called The Dungeons. <laughs> See you later, everybody. Say goodbye, Paramount Tart. Yes. All right.